Hi guys, Brendan from TAT. Um, today I'm just going to touch on oxygen storage capacity testing of catalytic converters um, and in regards to your, your common PO420 code. So what is an oxygen storage capacity test? Okay guys, so I had a um, Hilux in today, a 2.7 litre, um, I think the TGN 1.6. Um, so I had PO420, your, your pretty standard catalytic converter efficiency code. And um, if you search up the top PO420, um, you'll probably come across some articles and, and other videos. Um, there is one there relating to a Swift that I know we've got on the TAT YouTube page. And that's a pretty clear cut case where you can see the, the rear O2 really fluctuating while you're driving it along. Now this um, Hilux wasn't um, at that um, level yet so you know it required a little bit more investigation to decide was it you know say an O2 sensor not reading correctly was it a, an air leak in the exhaust distorting the readings um, or do we really have a, a catalyst that isn't efficient enough so um, I decided the best way to go about it after doing a bit of driving around was um, doing an oxygen storage capacity test so that's what you're looking at here on the screen on our scope um, so blue trace channel one at the top here is a signal out of the rear O2 and um, in this case I'm just looking at the accelerator pedal on channel um, two, my red trace there. So um, the idea of an oxygen storage capacity test, you used to be able to um, just do them with propane and, and that was the um, sort of the best ideal way to do them. So you would um, enrich in the mixture um, using propane in the intake, in the intake, hopefully after the, the mass airflow sensor so we don't um, damage that. So by creating this extremely rich mixture um, you're going to not allow the, the cat to have much oxygen and then when we turn the propane off um, you're going to get a sudden massive lean condition a rush of oxygen into the cat and the delay between turning that propane off and when we start to see the lean condition on the rear O2 is where um, that's your oxygen storage capacity and you can measure that um, not something you can really do on a scan tool accurately so ideally um, a scope is the way to, to to do it properly. So um, in this case, um, it's using a front wideband O2 sensor. Um, so as soon as I would um, give it propane, pretty quickly the fuel trims would adjust and it actually was able to run pretty well by adjusting those fuel trims and it, it meant that I wasn't going to get a great test. So um, the next ideal you can do is just driving down the road wide open throttle and you would go into an enrichment mode, which makes a, obviously a very rich condition. And then as soon as you back off the throttle, you will again have a lean condition and you can carry out the same measurement. Um, downside is not being in the bay, you have to go driving to do it. So. Uh, another method that I've employed on this one is simply getting the cat red hot by doing a, a nice hard drive, bring it back to the bay, holding the revs up, you know, say 3000 RPM or so for a, a good minute or so, and then I've, I've carried out the measurement um, when I've got off the throttle. So you can use, the, say, the accelerator pedal, the, the throttle position sensor, or you could use the um, front oxygen sensor as a, an indicator of when you got off that throttle, got onto D cell, and created a big lean condition. Um, in this case, I, I, did not, I do not have a milliamp clamp to accurately um, put the front wideband O2 sensor on the scope um, and the accelerator pedal that you can see here that I'm using is as, get it, as good as any indicator. So um, you can see at this point, um, if, if we started way back here, I would have been um, down at what, let's call this my throttle close position. So for a good period here and a few um, screens before this, I've been up at 3000 RPM and traveling along. We're starting to see a little bit of fluctuation in the um, rear O2 signal. Um, just the, these waves here, don't pay any attention to this noise here. That's likely gonna be ignition events. If it really upsets you, um, although I did have my sample rate um, quite low to try and capture not too much of this, you can always go and filter that out if you want. Um, in this case, you know, it's a very slow sort of signal in scope land, uh, a oxygen sensor. So, you know, filtered out most of that noise there if that makes it easier on your eyes. But what we're concerned with is when I get off the throttle, um, I put a cursor there. So just dragging a cursor from across, which I already have, but let's go ahead and do it just to show you. So I drag a cursor across to the point that I get off the throttle and I then drag my other cursor to the point where the rear O2 actually starts to register that lean condition, um, this point here, and in this case that's taken 490 milliseconds. So um, essentially getting off the throttle, lean condition, the 
um, catalytic converter is going to absorb that oxygen kind of like a sponge and it's using that in its in its actual catalytic um, reaction that it, it, its job um, and then once it reaches full capacity the oxygen is free to travel through that cat and get registered by that rear oxygen sensor the amount of time it takes to reach that saturation point is very important so in this case we got 490 milliseconds um, uh, lucky day that I had you know sometimes you win some I actually had a high ace of the same year same 2TR engine and that's good enough for me to be um, to go and test what its oxygen storage capacity was because um, you know it's, it's not the kind of thing where manufacturers will tend to give you a, a number that you're looking for even though a lot of the time it is the, the actual test that they're doing while the car's driving and oxygen storage test is the way they'll tell if they want to set that PO420 so this is our, our suspect the high ace and I've done the same test Sorry, this is our suspect, the um, High Lux, um, and I've done the same test on a High Ace. Much higher kilometres on the High Ace. Um, this had good 220,000 Ks on it or so, but hey, it's not setting a PO420, so I'm going to call it a, a good known vehicle. Again, I'm just going to filter this out a little bit for you. Um, so I've done the same test. We've got off the throttle at this point, and I've then measured um, when our rear O2 starts to register. And in this case, it's taken us 964 milliseconds. So a, a double of what the Hilux was able to achieve. Now, I've, I've kept these under similar conditions. So I went for the same drive before. I kept the same 3,000 RPM with the high ace. So I've tried to recreate the situation. Um, this this high ace has, as I said, far more more kilometers on it so generally from what I've heard you know you want to be getting a, at least around the one second mark um, a really good cat and hey you can only sort of play around and do it on known goods you know you're talking several seconds is, is the ideal um, in this case you know hey this thing does have a lot of K's it may be getting a little low but um, definitely that 500 or so milliseconds we're seeing on our suspect um, does not look as good as this one so um, gives you an idea of at least what someone's talking about when they say oxygen um, storage tests now, doing this on a scan tool, you're not going to be able to measure that very well. It's hard to measure something under a second on a scan tool, and um, particularly even even getting a refresh rate that that quick to get an accurate graph, let alone getting a um, nice uh, measurement when we're talking in milliseconds. So, um, in this case, uh, you know, it was nice to to be able to have the other Toyota there to be able to to test it, but um, in this this instance I, I do believe this thing requires a catalytic converter and doing a bit more um, looking into it because we want to make sure that there's um, nothing that's caused it because there probably is it only had 130,000 k's on the the Hilux um, it had quite positive fuel trims we're up at about um, 14 uh, I believe it was um, pretty much positive 14 throughout the majority of the rev range and it would change as we were um, going through the rev range a bit but enough for me to start looking into okay there's something going on here I don't want to see um, over plus or minus 10% um, on our fuel trims. In the end, it just had a, a super dirty mass airflow sensor, and I'd say that had a, a hand in contributing um, to the death of the cat. And I also spoke with the customer, and they'd been running E10 in it. So um, cleaning up the, the MAF was enough to get the fuel trims good. Um, I've advised them I would not recommend running E10 in the vehicle. It's likely gone some ways to costing you for this cat, and um, they will be getting a new catalytic converter. Um, not ideal, but in, in this situation, the genuine is, it's, it's not even really an option on this thing, you know, they, they price you out of the market. Um, I think it was about, going to be around about $2,600 or so for a cat. So, I mean, I've given them an option of aftermarket, I've given them an option of a good second hand, the low K's um, rec is one, which honestly sometimes can be a better option than aftermarket, it's a bit of a grey area. Um, but I've, I've also, you know, told them the price of the new one and told them this is what I would like to do. Um, if you decline the, the brand new Toyota one, you have to understand that it comes with um, some grey area, but hey, I'm trying to do the best by you. So um, oxygen storage tests, um, check out the PO420 up in the search bar at the top and, and you should be directed to some, some other testing methods. Um, but yeah, it's, it can be a difficult code, but with the right tools, um, you can get some confidence in trying to um, get to the bottom of catalytic converter efficiency. Thanks, guys.